Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. So the crypto market uh, did fairly well over the weekend. Right now it's correcting a little bit. Bitcoin is uh, down a little bit, uh, down to 93.31. Ethereum at 188 and XRP trading at just shy of 25 cents, 0.249 right now. Uh, and it's actually up 0.42% within the last 24 hours. Uh, the market cap for the entire crypto space is sitting at a healthy 259.8 billion. Okay, we saw a lot of uh, gains in the crypto space within the last week or so, uh, and now we're seeing that uh, little bit of correcting. Okay, this is XRP on the hourly, and a couple of days ago, we saw XRP go as high as about 26.1.261 cents. At least on this exchange, I got the Bitstamp exchange up here, uh, and uh, you know, it's, it's continuing its rally up. Now, when you put it on the daily, guys, you can see that that is quite insignificant, that, that downward turn that we've seen over the last few hours is quite insignificant when you look at the bigger picture. Now, this is XRP since the beginning of the year. Okay, we've got January 1st right here where my cursor is, and we've seen nothing but upward momentum. Okay, we can see here we are making higher highs, okay, all the time, higher highs, higher lows as well. We can see higher lows. Okay, we can put the trend line here. We can see clearly that the trend is moving upward, right? The trend continues to move up, and that uh, is also just signified by higher lows and higher highs. And not only that, folks, we are seeing an inverse head and shoulders pattern here as well on the chart for XRP on the daily. So everything is looking honky dory, as they say. And when you compare it to Bitcoin, let's just bring up Bitcoin real quick here. Uh, Bitcoin right now looking fairly positive as well. Uh, I brought up this inverse head and shoulders on the Bitcoin chart uh, a few few weeks ago now, and we can see the same thing. Okay, higher highs, higher lows, and Bitcoin's sitting pretty here. I think it needs to break out of this. So we saw significant gains for Bitcoin coming down a little bit on low volume, low selling pressure, but ultimately we're seeing a positive move for Bitcoin. I'm highly confident that we're going to continue to see the move up. Uh, once we hit the mid tens, it might uh, base. So about 10,500, I could see it basing a little bit again, the, the same way we, we saw it base back here in September, 2019, finding that sweet spot there before it continues its momentum upward to, uh, let's call it, uh, Anywhere between 11,005 and 12,001, 12,002, 12,003, somewhere around there. XRP Crypto Wolf on Twitter brought this up. Bermuda is planning a comprehensive crypto and blockchain ecosystem. And so this from Coindesk. Now, in what must have been a drastic change for Dennis Pitcher, chief fintech advisor to the premier of Bermuda, he and Coindesk's Michael Casey took to the chilly streets of Davos to talk about his government steps to enable blockchain adoption in the island nation. And you got to think to yourself, a lot of these island nations are very limited when it comes to payment options. Uh, but uh, Bermuda, one of the richer island nations uh, clearly sees the the need for this and clearly understands how this could benefit their people. So in the summer of 2018, we launched a comprehensive regulatory framework to provide clarity and leverage, said Pitcher. We introduced a principle-based framework that allowed us to define more of a scope around a business plan as opposed to specific activities. That allows you to have the flexibility to focus on managing risks of what's new in the space. Pitcher hopes to create a system that allows Bermudians to spend the digital currency they receive on government services and, in doing so, build a bridge to oversee economies. And that's what it's all about. By allowing the government to accept it provides an opportunity for merchants to start saying, well, I can look at accepting digital dollars, he said. So taxi operators, tourism operators, commercial businesses have a place to actually spend, which means that you're not going to have to fall back on the traditional financial system. And that's what's important when we're in this new emerging ecosystem with cryptocurrencies and we are giving cryptocurrency, uh, whether it's, uh, you know, a stable coin to someone else or they're giving us uh, XRP or uh, what, however the transfer is going to happen. The point is at the end of the day, you are, someone is going to hold a cryptocurrency and they're going to need to spend it somewhere. So we have to develop this ecosystem. And this is what it sounds like Bermuda is doing. We have to develop this ecosystem where cryptocurrency is going to be so widely accepted, uh, whether it's stable coins or what have you, that more people will want to transact in said forms of currency. Now, this is where XRP is beautifully placed within this framework because they are the bridge. They are going to be the ones that convert whatever it is you have to whatever it is they want. Uh, this is kind of just a nice case study of where this need is very, very important. So thanks so much, XRP Crypto Wolf, for that. Of course, Ripple unlocks half a billion tokens from escrow. 
It was the first of the month a few days ago. And now you guys are seeing they're releasing 500 million tokens from their escrow. The last few months now we've seen that. So the data from the XRP blockchain noted by monitoring resource whale alert on February 1st confirmed a single transaction of 500 million tokens worth about $119.5 million left Ripple's escrow on the same day. So the move is the latest in a series of planned releases, which Ripple has scheduled to occur on the first of each month for 55 months. And guys, how far are we in this 55 month plan? I feel like we're uh, about halfway through at this point. I think Ripple began uh, doing this at the beginning of 2018 and uh, 55 months would take us roughly about four and a half years. So we're about two years in, two and a bit, not quite two and a half. Uh, nevertheless, we're going to see how this continues to affect the ecosystem. And as the months continue to grow and as that exponential use for XRP continues to rise, we'll see if they release more XRP or less XRP and how that will affect price uh, on that bigger scale. Right now, we're just seeing this price kind of do what it needs to do within the frame framework of Bitcoin within the context of Bitcoin moving, XRP follows, the rest of the cryptocurrency market follows. To me, this market is still looking like it looked two, three, four years ago, right? Following Bitcoin, nothing really diverging, but we might see a change on the horizon, folks. So Tiffany Hayden here puts it this way, high risk, high reward. And this makes sense. In 2017, $200 bought you 38,000 XRP. Can you imagine? Today, $200 can buy you 785 XRP. Jungle Inc. responds to this. How much more powerful is that statistic when it's coming from experience and not just looking back at a chart? If you've actually lived through this, I bet you that feels so, so good. I was not around in the space when you could buy 38,000 XRP for $200. Uh, and so, yeah, it's all perspective. Although HJ brings up a good point here. In 2018, $200 bought you 71 XRP. And today, $200 buys you 785. Perspective goes both ways, uh, but you got to look at your investment. You got to look at when's a good time to buy. Don't buy on the rally up. Always take a look at the trend. Don't get caught up in the FOMO, guys. And this is why I keep saying don't buy when we're up here. Don't buy when you're when you're seeing the price rise. Buy now as little confidence as you may have in cryptocurrency assets like XRP at this moment in time. Now's the time to buy. And when I say buy now, that is not financial advice. I'm not telling you to buy now. You still have to do your research. You still have to make decisions based on what you believe, based on the research, because that's your money that you've earned, that you have the right to invest in any way you see fit. And this kind of came out of nowhere. I saw this this morning. Facebook Libra's financial inclusion failed to meet MasterCard's expectations. And so we're learning a little bit more about why MasterCard and so many others ended up backing out of the Libra plan. And guys, would you be surprised if I told you that Facebook would not commit to not doing anything that is not fully compliant with local law? That's right. These guys think that they can do what they want and MasterCard got cold feet and uh, rightfully so. The company backed out of the Libra project by stating that the company had to do its due diligence by knowing its clients, anti-money laundering and data management. However, Libra appeared a bit hesitant according to the chief executive. All that, every time you talk to the main proponents of Libra, I said, would you put that in writing? And they would not. Apart from security concerns, MasterCard was also skeptical of Libra's medium to make money. So here's another reason. He noted that when you don't understand how money gets made, it gets made in ways you don't like. Along with these existing doubts, Facebook positioned itself as a financial inclusion tool before announcing its intention to link to a proprietary digital wallet, Calibra. And here's another quote here. It went from this altruistic idea into their own wallet. I'm like, this doesn't sound right. For financial inclusion, the government has got to pay you in this currency. You've got to receive it as an instrument you can understand. And you have to be able to use it to buy rice and cycles. If you can get paid in Libra coin, which go into Calibras, which go back into pounds to buy rice, I don't understand how that works. And so it sounds as though that, uh, you know, Facebook was being quite shady behind closed doors, kind of not really fessing up to their realistic plan and how they wanted to orchestrate uh, their project. So some interesting insight there. I can see why companies like MasterCard and finally everybody else just bailed on Facebook Libra. A, you can't just print money, but B, more importantly, you have to be fully compliant. And this is what these companies 
are all about. They have a history in the world of finance where they have thrived based on their product, but not only that, obviously adhering to the laws of the land. And you know, when, when you're gonna partner with this kind of renegade company, Facebook, who doesn't feel like they have to abide by those laws, nothing good could come from that. And so this is why we trust a company like Ripple, who is in cryptocurrency, but also willing to be fully compliant. And this is why they're gonna succeed. Now, XRP Nation on Twitter, uh, posted this and I thought this was really interesting at nation XRP on Twitter XRP ODL will prevent the biggest market crash in history from hitting rock bottom and he shows the graph here uh, and the graph shows us right the 74 crash in the stock market and we can see the trend here okay this is from 1954 all the way to about present day the OPEC crisis uh, the 87 crash over here Asian contagion the dot-com crash financial crisis so on and so forth and we can see markets move right ups and downs ups and downs and uh, the fact is that when people are scared people take money out out of the stock market and stocks just crash in tandem stock market update down here says it won't prevent stocks from crashing in fact the only way crypto goes up will be the collapse of the dollar so this is an another theory on this the old monetary system must die or get bumped very bad for crypto to take center stage otherwise you may see a small rally then fade i'm long xrp large volume waiting for the dollar to collapse so another interesting take on this and we've talked about that too in the past uh, but, you know, XRP Nation still does have a point here. If there is that on-demand liquidity, we will likely not see the same kind of panic that we've seen in the past, where people have had to take out their money from other assets just so they would be liquid in order to have money for other purposes. And so this is the beauty of ODL. Will we see the same kind of financial crisis if we had ODL already up and running? It's an interesting thing to ponder because I can see both sides of it. Uh, but ultimately, it's the illiquidity that really causes a lot of this damage. So I do think he has a point. XRP ODL will prevent and or could prevent, maybe is how we'll put it, the biggest market crash in history from hitting rock bottom. So I got to thank XRP Nation for posting that. Thanks so much. And one last thing, guys, before I go, you heard about that Bitcoin icon that Twitter added to their platform. Well, King Solomon at XRP Owl really does put it into perspective. Bitcoin maximalists get excited about a built in emoji on Twitter. XRP realists, on the other hand, get excited when the most powerful FIs and governments in the world discuss XRP utility. The Fed, WEF, IMF, BIS, ECB, and integrate with Ripple to determine their paths forward. I'm banking on XRP and King Solomon, so am I. So am I, my friend. I think many people watching this channel are. We're gonna keep an eye on this trend, guys, to see where price goes. But in the meantime, I wanna hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.